Good evening. Tonight we begin with a story about make-believe adventure and real-life violence. So last November, I... Uh, hold on. I got the date wrong, but don't worry about it. We, we got this. We have technology. So anyway, last November, I got really into Dungeons & Dragons. Specifically, this Twitch show called Critical Role. It's put on by these professional voice actors, and it's this really immersive, really entertaining game of Dungeons & Dragons. Thing in the walls, nothing of the corpses, none of the bones. You've disturbed a lot of the dead, um, and there's been no sign of... And I was watching it, and I was like, this is amazing. So I went and I bought a bunch of books and the essentials kit, and I started watching a ton of YouTube videos, like these guys, and these guys, and this guy. And then this guy, he wrote me a really nice note, actually, I really like him. And then these two guys, they live together and they make YouTube videos, and they're pretty good, except for they do these skits that I'm not the biggest fan of, but lots of people subscribe to them, so I guess if that's your thing. And then one day I found out about this Kickstarter put on by Reaper Minis called Bones 5, and basically you pay a little bit of money up front and you get hundreds and hundreds of minis. So in April of 2021, I'm gonna be getting like 350 minis in the mail and a pirate ship. But after I funded the Kickstarter, I realized that I didn't actually know how to paint minis, so I had to learn. So I did these starter kits, and I watched these guys on YouTube, and also this guy. And so I started to paint. I painted this guy, and then these guys, and then this guy, and then these guys, and then these guys, and then this guy, and then this guy. And then, guy. And then finally, I think I'm ready for the 350 minis that are going to come in April of 2021. But then as I sat here in quarantine, I received an email saying an item in my wish list was back in stock. And I thought to myself, finally, the D&D Icons of the Realms Miniatures Elemental Evil Silver Dragon Premium Figure. Just kidding, it will never be back in stock and also it's $65. But it was the next best thing, the Beholder, the Mac Daddy, the cover of the Monster Manual, the thing that Sofia Vergara's husband has hanging in their basement. <laughs> Quick tangent here, there's a handful of monsters that are trademarked by Dungeons and Dragons. Some examples are the Ableth, the Mind Flayer, and of course the Beholder. And so only whiz kids can make those minis because they're licensed by D&D, &D, and that just means that their minis are really hard to find. So anyways, I got my hands on the Beholder and I'm gonna show you how to paint it. First things first, obviously you wanna open it and get it out of that case because uh, you can't paint it inside the box. And it comes with all these extra eyes that shoot lasers and stuff, but we're just gonna stick with the default eyes. I don't feel like getting fancy with the lasers. So you wanna super glue all those eyes into place. You don't have to use a safety pin to use the super glue. That's just my own additional touch. Then you wanna bust out the paints, pick the colors that you wanna use. It's always good to have a simple palette, I think, in my opinion. But what do I know? So then you wanna stick the mini to something so that you don't have to get your fingers all painted by holding the base. I chose to stick mine to a miniature PF candle. PF candle, if you want to sponsor me, hit me up. I've spent like $80 since quarantine started on your candles. Anyway, I used this Vans Reward Member Cup. I wanted a glass one, but they didn't have a glass one when I went to the store, so I had to settle for a stainless steel one, and it's not as nice as a glass, obviously. So then you want to squirt your paint out onto a wet palette. This is a hot tip right here. A wet palette keeps your paints from drying out, and since miniature paint is super expensive, you want to save as much as you can. You just want to cover everything. This is what we call in show business the base coat. You just paint the whole thing the color. Obviously, beholders are purple, duh. But this is a really, really dark purple. It almost ends up looking black, so I'll show you a trick later on how to get that back to a little bit of purple. And so when you get to the eye stalks here, you have to be really careful. It's like when you wanted to paint your room black and splatter paint it as a child, and your mom said, no, you can't do that because it'll be such a pain to paint over it if we want to sell the house. Well, the same logic applies to painting plastic miniature monsters. If you get those eyeballs covered in that purple paint, it'll be really hard to paint over with white, so you wanna be very careful around where the eyeballs are. This is one of the more difficult parts because the teeth are in the way, and even though you can't fit a paintbrush in there, you can see it, so you really have to focus, and you're gonna get some of the teeth red, but don't worry, you're gonna go over the teeth with white. So then once you have the body painted, the mouth painted, everything like that, you can start doing the eyeballs, and I'm really shit at painting eyeballs, so this was a very stressful moment for me, but I think it turned out all right. And then once you have the whole mini painted, you get to move on to the pro level stuff. This is called a wash. You just water down some black paint and then you just paint over, wash over the whole mini. Uh, this seeps into the shadowy areas, allowing for a dark contrast where there would be shadows. And then you move on to the dry brushing. This is where you can put some purple back into the mini. You choose a lighter purple color and then you dry brush it over. And so that covers the whole mini where the highlights are, bringing the purple back. Then finally, this mini came with a little plastic piece to make the eyeball look like a real eyeball, and I was a little worried putting this on that it would make it look stupid and I wouldn't be able to get it off again, but I think I actually like how it looks, so it worked out. And there you go, that's a beholder. Thanks for tuning in to Painting with Zach.
Perhaps this is the crux of the matter, how we deal with the undeniable love of violence in our species. D&D has taken it a step beyond even TV and movies and books into the inner mind. Millions enjoy that voyage, but we don't really know how many others find unsuspected dragons in their psychic dungeons. How, then, do we deal with our demons? As you're walking over the drawbridge, the old rotten wood gives way beneath your feet and you fall 1,500 meters down. So you have died. I'm sorry, but that's life. 